A friend of mine who's been cutting my hair for 20 years had this vending machine in his salon and uh, the handle was stuck. It used to work, but the handle stuck and he asked me if I'd have a look at it. One of the things I love about old machines like this is that they're sturdy and well-made and the fasteners are easily accessible and so they're easy to take apart and, and put back together. The relevant mechanisms were easily accessible through the bottom of the machine. So this was stuck and um, what would happen is you would put a nickel in it and turn it and that would open the door and let the object fall through but it was getting stuck in this position, it was going too far. Um, so I uh, went under here and there's um, a spring mechanism that works as a catch here when this turns. And it was just slipping off and allowing the handle to turn too far and get stuck in that position. So I just adjusted this spring. I think it was just sticky. So I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on it, a little bit of uh, machine oil, and I think that'll do the trick. And this is the um, mechanism that controls the portions. So when you put the nickel in and turn it, it turns this thing. And um, so these sections capture, I don't know what you have, candy or whatever. Uh, and you can adjust the sizes opening by loosening these three screws and rotating the surface part to have it uh, uh, capture more or less of uh, whatever's being dispensed. So now that I've got it working, uh, I'm just going to clean up the inside here. I think my friend wants to use it to dispense like uh, peanut M&Ms or something. So uh, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to clean this all up really nice so that it uh, is suitable to have a, a food item distributed. Now to uh, get the oil distributed, I'm just going to put a series of nickels through here and keep turning it. I've oiled the mechanism underneath as well. So I can just, uh, turning it to get the oil spread. And you can see already it's snapping back nicely. It's the mechanism is working much more. Before it was sticking like this. You can see now the spring actually brings it back. Yeah. It's working well now. There it is. I'm going to do it a couple more times. Oh yeah, works great now. All I have to do is clean it up and put it back together. I'm cleaning up the inside of it now. I'm using a uh, 4-0 steel bowl. This is great stuff. It's very fine and you can use it to clean up material without scratching it. Uh, I've even used it on car windows, uh, on a car window that had been through a fire. So I'm just going to clean up the inside of it um, and then I'm going to clean it out with alcohol. Uh, I lubricated these parts with machine oil and uh, WD-40, so I'm going to pour some alcohol through that too, just to rinse some of that out, because uh, we are going to have uh, food products in here. Uh, it's well sealed off, but still, I want to make sure there's no fumes in there. Uh, the next step uh, is to polish up the plastic partitions. Um, I've polished these two already. They came out really nice. I used a um, uh, plastic polish that's used for cleaning plastic headlight covers on cars. Uh, works really well. This one I haven't done yet. It's still got the original decal on it, a little bit of damage to it, but I want to protect that, so I'm going to polish this side first, and then I'm going to just polish around it very carefully so I don't mess up the decal. All right, just put a little dab of it on a polishing cloth, and then I'll just rub this over the whole thing, and then I'll hold it down and really really polish it. Just really rub the polish in. Uh, it doesn't take too much. It cleans it up really nice. It removes tiny little scratches and really cleans it up. I finished cleaning up all of the components. Um, polished the chrome. Came out really nice. 
uh, on the paint, I cleaned it up with the window cleaner, and then I put a coat of car wax on it to shine it up and help protect the paint. Um, polished up all of the chrome with um, steel wool, and then used some silver polish just to give it a nice cleaning and polishing, and uh, cleaned all the inside out with uh, alcohol and uh, poured alcohol through to remove the W40. It all works really good now. Um, clean these components up with just some dish soap and water. Scrubbed it all nice and clean. And I even polished up the key so it's nice and shiny. So now um, I get to reassemble it. Alright, we'll start with the, the base. I've also cleaned and polished. And this body goes on that. And then the um, distributor goes in. And then the uh, reservoir top of that. And then this little component which uh, smooths out the loading of the product in the chambers goes in. Now we put the screws in. And now we have the deflector. And now we insert the uh, plastic. and the lid and then finally the locking mechanism and the key. And it's finished. And now we'll try the coins. Takes nickels. Very good. Perfect. I did some research on this machine and it was made by Oak Manufacturing Company in Los Angeles, California about 1950. Uh, this one's in pretty good condition. They don't seem to be common. Uh, I'm guessing it's worth probably 150 to $200. Uh, the stickers are available. That little Acorn Altarm sticker, you can probably get one for about six, six bucks. I think I would, I would put a new sticker on it. And finally, these are charms, which came with the original dispenser. Uh, my friend bought this from the estate of the man who ran these, and apparently they would, uh, and these came with it, and apparently he'd mix these charms in with the candies, and so, you know, some of them would come out. Uh, and it's really interesting to look at the uh, diversity of these and to think about the time period when they were when they were done look at this 
it's a little um, ice block uh, carrier for ice blocks for an, uh, uh, ice boxes before people had refrigerators. You had these tongs that you would carry the uh, blocks of ice with, and then there's the you know football and and uh, it's like a baseball. Um, it's like a little sort of genie head. Uh, this is a stagecoach. Uh, skull and crossbones. Uh, this this is a park bench. Like really, a, a park bench as a charm. Uh, okay, uh, that's pretty obvious. A uh, little elephant. Uh, this is some little figure, some little ethnic figure. Uh, let's see what's got here. It's like a vase. A life ring it says SS Epi on it. A boxing glove. Uh, this sort of a coin emblem. Uh, tassel and bow. Tassels and bow. Uh, ring with dice on it. That's clever. Uh, Little Scotty dog. Uh, this looks like uh, another dog figure. Don't guess the breed. Baseball and mitt. Uh, cowboy boot with spur. Uh, seahorse is cute. I like that. Um, this is <laughs> a hot dog. <laughs> What else we have here? This is kind of a cartoonish wolf head. Very strange. Uh, this is a desk. <laughs> a desk. Uh, little bells. Jingle bells. A little ring with a heart on it. That sort of makes sense. Um, like a dog's bone. A W. Because, you know, we got to have a W. Uh, another ring with a little skull on it. Uh, these are looks like a couple of fruits, like peaches or something. Uh, there's your O. Uh, this one's a little hard to make out, but uh, it's actually it's a sled. It's a snow sled. Um, some sort of theatrical face. Uh, tiny little bell. Uh, this is a vase with it looks like some tulips in it. Uh, another dog character. This one's painted, so I think it's a different character. And then there's this, which looks like a jack, like from, you know, a game of jacks. A uh, pair of scissors. But, you know, we all want a pair of scissors on our charm bracelet. This is um, a fellow riding a horse. It looks like he's jumping over a, uh, a jump like a steeplechase or something. Um, looks like a cardinal, a little cardinal bird. Um, hitchhiking thumb. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Oh. This, which I can't really make out what that is. Oh, it's a piano. <laughs> a piano. Another heart with the arrow theme. Strange assortment of little weird things to have in here. This is um, a monkey's head with the monkey's hands over its eyes, so it's the see no evil. We would assume that there was a hear no evil and speak no evil too somewhere, but I don't see those in here. A strange assortment of things from a different time. Oh, that's a basketball. No. No. I just realized that these uh, <coughs> footballs have different teams on them. This is Colgate. Um, 
Harvard, <clears throat> UCLA, Columbia, Yale, Rice, so I guess you could keep trying to get the team you want. Texas A&M. Uh, Notre Dame. Michigan. And then the, uh, the little baseballs have different teams on them, too. Um, Yankees. Reds. Browns. Indians, CCNY Beavers, looks like a basketball, isn't it? Might be able to date that from that. Bowling Green, Cubs, and then I found a, another of the monkey heads with the here and a weevil, so we have the See no weaver, see no weevil, hear no weevil, and there's probably a speaking weevil somewhere. Um, a cowboy with chaps, uh, fishing rod and reel, kind of a short one. Um, skis, um, fish, to keep fish. This is apparently a bowling pin, I would assume. Yep. Uh, this one's kind of odd. It's a screw. And um, what is this? A ball. I think this might be a pun. This is an old pun. Screwball. It means someone who's goofy, messed up, silly. Screwball. I think that's what that is. So that's that's actually pretty clever. Um, monkey. Um, this looks like a harmonica, but it says marimba on it. So, uh, okay. Whatever that is. Uh, cougar. Uh, Hazelnut, uh, very nice hazelnut. A little cup of tea, cup of tea, drum. Pretty simple drum, and then <laughs> a bathtub. Really? So there's a couple of them. Here's another bathtub. We got bathtubs. Let's go figure. <laughs>